Now every SI unit or System International unit that we use, they're all based off the properties of water. And from these basic SI units, we can get watts and ohms and newtons and all other units that we have in physics. They're all just vanilla units, as it were. We're not changing them in any way. But the only exception to this is kilograms. Kilograms is the standard unit for mass. Yes, we have a kilo in front, so technically we have a prefix, but whenever we use an equation that has mass in, we have to use kilograms, not grams. That's the only exception. Kilo, as you know, means a thousand. So a kilogram is a thousand grams, just like a kilometer is a thousand meters. So even though a joule isn't an SI unit because it's derived from force times distance and force is derived from mass times acceleration, we're going to have a look at that now. If you have five joules, well, you don't have to do anything with that. It's just five joules. You can put that straight into an equation. But what if you're given kilojoules instead? So joules, well, that's just times by one, isn't it? Kilojoules is times by a thousand. If you have five kilojoules, then that means that you have 5,000 joules. Let's go one step further. What about if we have megajoules? Mega means a million. So there's times this number here. Let's go one more. Let's go to gigajoules. That's times by a billion or a thousand million. Do you notice something going on here? Every time we go up one of these prefixes, we're actually timesing by another thousand. Now we have an easier way of dealing with this and that is called standard form. Instead of timesing by these massive numbers here and trying to remember how many zeros we've got, all we do is times by 10 the right number of times. A thousand is 10 times 10 times 10. In other words, it's 10 cubed, 10 to the power three. Here we have a thousand times another thousand. So we're timesing by 10 three times and then another three times as well. So this is actually times 10 to the six. And this one here, you guessed it, times 10 to the nine. So it's really useful. We're going up in thousands each time we have a prefix like killer, mega, and giga. Now you do have to remember these prefixes. Hang on a second though, 10 to the nine, 10 to the six, 10 to the three, what's just a joule then? Well, if you go down in threes, then technically this should be times 10 to the zero. Does that make sense? 10 to the zero, well, that's actually technically 10 divided by 10. So yeah, that gives us one. So that makes sense. What about if we go smaller than a joule? We go to a thousandth first, and that's a millijoule. And that's divided by a thousand. So if we're dividing by a thousand now, we could say we're dividing by 10 to the three, but instead we say we're timesing by 10 to the minus three. We're dividing by 10 three times. If you have something to the minus power, that means you're dividing by it. So even though it has a times in front, yeah, we're getting smaller. What's smaller than a millijoule? Dividing by a million, that's gonna be times 10 to the minus six. That's actually a microjoule. This is often the one that people forget. We have a mu, it's a Greek letter. It's a U with a little tail on the front as well. Let's go down again, times 10 to the minus nine. That actually gives us a nanojoule. So we've gone to a gigajoule, that's times a billion. We've gone to nanojoule, which is a billionth. And the way I remember it is nano, sounds like nona, minus nine. That's how I remember it. There is actually one more that we can do as well. And that's go down to a picajoule. I can't bother to write out all the zeros because you get the idea with that. But yes, that's gonna be times 10 to the minus 12. There is one more as well. If we go down to times 10 to the minus 15, that gives us a femtometer. And you'll see that come up in the strong nuclear force. Have a look at my particle physics video to see where that comes into play. So these are pretty much all of the prefixes that we use, the standard prefixes that we use anyway. So how do we actually use this then? Standard form is very, very useful because it means that we don't actually have to convert units. So let's say that we're trying to find the speed of a wave. We do that with the equation V equals F lambda or C equals F lambda, depending on your personal preference. Wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. Now let's say that I have a frequency that is 5.3 gigahertz and I have a wavelength 
that is 720 nanometers. Now, I can't just times 5.3 and 720 together because we have these prefixes. All I had to figure out what these prefixes mean in standard form, then I can whack them in. Giga, we said, is a billion. So that's times 10 to the 12. So this is exactly the same as 5.3 times 10 to the 9 hertz. So I've replaced my prefix with standard form. I can now put this into my calculator by just pressing 5.3 and then the times 10 button or EXP button, same thing, and then nine afterwards. 720 nanometers, well that's gonna be 720 times 10 to the minus nine, because of course, nano means times 10 to the minus nine. So again, I've gotten rid of the prefix and replaced it with standard form. I can now put this number straight into a calculation. Technically, this still isn't in standard form because standard form really should just have one digit in front of the dot. You wouldn't get marked down if you put this down as a number, but uh, let's just figure out what would this be if I put 7.2. Okay, let's, let's put the zero in there as well. 7.2, so I'm getting rid of two powers here. So I have two extra powers here, don't I? So uh, my minus nine is actually gonna become minus seven meters. These are both as correct as each other, but this is your proper standard form. So let's times these numbers together to find our speed. 5.3 times 10 to the nine, just gonna pop that into my calculator, times 7.20 times 10 to the minus seven. And that gives me a wave speed of 38.16 meters per second. I can write it like that, or I can write it like that because as we know, anything to the minus power means divide. We're divided by seconds once. Now, just one aside here, this value here, what is its precision? Well, I've only got two significant figures here, two sig figs for short. What about this one here? Well, I got one, two, three, so the precision is three, or I can infer basically that it's three significant figures. Whenever you calculate something in physics, you can't end up with an answer that's more precise than your least precise value that you're given to do the calculation with. So here we have two sig figs. Here we have three sig figs. It could be two, but I'm gonna say it's three. So therefore, I need to go to two significant figures. So 38.16, but if a question asks me to give my answer to an appropriate level of precision, I actually have to give that just to 38 meters per second. Now that is the correct precision. So that's standard form and prefixes. I hope you found that useful. If you did, then please leave a like. If you have any questions or think I've missed anything out that you'd like to see, then please leave it in a comment down below and I'll see you next time.